Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be generating basically any image we would like using Stable Diffusion. Now, if you've never heard of that, it is an AI program that can actually generate really almost anything based on your text prompts. It is uh, free. Uh, it runs locally on your PC, so you can use it as much as you like for no cost whatsoever. Uh, and it is also uncensored, which means if you want to do extra scary zombies, well, you can do it in this program. Uh, now, Stable Diffusion has its own uh, way of installing its own GitHub page and everything, but we're not going to be using that one today. We're going to be using a different one. It is called Focus or Focus or Focus or something like that. Uh, anyway, it's basically Focus with three O's. Uh, and the reason why we're going to be using this one is because it takes Stable Diffusion and it basically tunes it so it's really easy to get good results. If you've ever used standard stable diffusion, sometimes you're putting in all these really lengthy prompts and trying to get it different styles and things like that. And it's kind of a, a struggle to get it to output what you want. However, it is much, much easier with focus or focus. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Now to install this, uh, we're going to be installing under windows today. You will need windows. You will need an NVIDIA graphics card with at least four gigs of VRAM. And also you'll need probably about 12 gigs or so of hard drive space because this program is quite large. So let's go ahead and get started. So you just scroll down on the Focus GitHub page. And by the way, links to all of these will be in the description down below. And you click uh, on a click here to download. It's just that easy. And it's going to go ahead and download the program. And this will take just a minute. So we'll come back whenever that is done. Okay, it's all done. So let's go ahead and come up here and open up our downloads folder. And here's the actual file itself. Now, if you note it, it ends in uh, .7z, which means it's a 7-zip file. And now 7-zip is an open source, free zipper and unzipper program. Uh, and you can also use uh, the a newer version of WinRAR, by the way, too, if you own that. Uh, but uh, right here is the 7-zip download page. And I'll have a link to this in the description. You would basically pick uh, the 64-bit Windows version in this case, uh, download it, and the installer is super easy. You literally just click next a couple of times and it will be installed. So you will need that to unzip this program. So let's go ahead and go back to the uh, downloads folder here. Now you'd want to uh, typically unzip this somewhere where you would want to run it from. Basically it runs from the folder, doesn't actually install. And so uh, you would go ahead and uh, unzip this and then I'm going to move it somewhere. Uh, so you could, you know, move it to your, you know, C drive or wherever. I'm going to place it on my desktop so it's easy to find. So let's go ahead and get this thing unzipped. Uh, so I'm going to right click and with Windows 11, you have to go down to show more options. Uh, and then here's seven zip and I want to extract it into its own folder. So I'm going to select that and off it goes. Uh, so we'll be back here as soon as this is done. Okay, now that's, that's unzipped. I would just right click it and I'm gonna copy it. And in this case, I'm gonna copy it into my desktop. Now, just to save time, I've already done that. So let's go ahead and take a look at my desktop. And out here is that folder. And here it is. Now, the very first time we're going to run this, it's actually going to download a lot of files. And so it's going to take quite a while, but that's a one time process unless it finds an update or something. Uh, and so uh, it's going to take a while the first time, but when you run the second time, it's going to be much, much faster and it won't download all this stuff again. So let's go ahead and uh, just double click on this run command right here, which is a Windows batch file, and it will start its download and installation process. And we're just going to let this go as it works through everything. Notice it's already started to download here. And these are going to be quite large. So again, you're going to need, uh, you know, 10, 12, 15 gigs of space in order to actually have this program installed on your computer. So let's go ahead and let this go and watch what happens here as it gets everything downloaded and actually launches the application itself. 
Okay, now it's all done and it's actually launched a web browser and opened up this new interface. But let's just kind of go back to the uh, DOS command and see what happened back here. Uh, it basically downloaded some really large files. Uh, looks like I've got another 10 gigs worth of stuff and it's launched its own web server and actually has this little URL right here that if you paste in any web browser will actually open up this interface. Now it's automatically opened up uh, a web browser and pointed itself to this interface so that part's all done and it's done a little bit more processing but now it's all ready to go. So to actually use it in the very most basic way, is you just come down here where you uh, put your prompt in and you just put in whatever you want, like a Chihuahua, and you just hit generate. It's going to take a little bit of time because again, AI images are pretty processor intensive. And this is a laptop running a uh, laptop 3080, by the way, an NVIDIA 3080. Just to give you uh, some idea here. Uh, so we'll just wait just a second. Uh, by default, by the way, the program's set to generate two images because, you know, you don't always get what you want on the first one. So it's going to go ahead and create two for comparison's sake. You can turn that up to, you know, four or six or whatever you like to if you uh, don't want to do that or turn it down to one, obviously, too. And it looks like it's almost got the first image done here. And it's going to go ahead and generate the second one. And we'll just pause until that's done. And there we go. We have our two images of a Chihuahua. Now, of course, it has this kind of standard cinematic style that it's already picked. Uh, so what if you want to change that? Uh, well, that's super easy. All you need to do is go down here and click the Advanced button. And this is really where all the magic happens. Now, the very first tab over here just has a choice between speed and quality. Uh, normally, I find that setting it on speed is fine. You don't really need the, the quality. It doesn't seem to make that much of an improvement. Um, changing the uh you know the size of the images uh could be useful if you're doing it for you know TikTok or something but uh sometimes that can throw things off normally i leave it at standard size and i just resize it from here uh down here is the number of images again it's set to two by default and down here uh, is a negative prompt area that's in case you want something to not be in the picture so if you're trying to generate something and it keeps sticking fishes in there and you don't want to have fishes in there you could type in the word fishes and it would you know remove it from the image at least most of the time what you're going to find out is ai is very creative but also kind of random and so it has a tendency to not always do exactly what you want but basically close to what you want. And that's why it's, you know, you generate multiple images is to in order to find the one that you like the best. And down here is something called random. And if you have that checked, it's basically going to create a random image every time. If you uncheck that, you know, there's something down here called a seed. And this is just a number. And if I was to uncheck that and leave this number in here or type in one of my choosing, it's going to basically generate the same images over and over and over again. Uh, so if you need, uh, you know, that to happen, that's why you would turn that off. Normally, of course, you'd want to leave that on. So basically, we're not going to make any changes to this tab right here. Then we go to actually the most exciting tab, and this is style. Right now, there's only two of these dozens and dozens and dozens of styles checked. <clears throat> so let's kind of talk about each one. The very first one uh, is specific to this, you know, Focus program. Uh, and it's basically kind of like a language preprocessor. So when I typed in Chihuahua here and hit generate, this actually took the prompt and said, hey, let's add, you know, uh, Chihuahua, high detail, you know, high, you know, realistic photo quality, all these extra words that I did not type in. And that's how you get such good results out of this program, is at least one of the ways, uh, is because of this language preprocessor. Uh, so that's what that does. And then here is the default for the picture style and it's set it slightly cinematic. So you can kind of tell these are kind of like movie quality images, right? With the dramatic lighting and the bokeh effect and all that sort of good stuff, right? So that's what's causing that to happen. 
Now, by the way, I find that leaving on this language preprocessor here, the, the Focus version 2, uh, works really well for things like cinematic and a lot of these, like advertising and stuff, it works really well. Uh, however, when you get down to some of these art styles, like, you know, psychedelic or pop art, stuff like that, uh, I find it can be too heavy handed. So you may not want to leave this turned on all the time. You just have to kind of experiment with what works and what does it. Uh, so, and by the way, you can turn on as many of these as you like, and it tries to basically merge the styles together. Uh, and so that's another way to get things done. So for example, let's say that you, um, you know, you want a cubist art style, but you want it kind of dark. So maybe you'll come down here and you'll, you know, find grunge or something and, or horror or gothic and select that. Uh, and that will give you these two styles mixed together. So just kind of an example here, let's go ahead and generate some other images just to kind of show you what it can do. Uh, so I'm going to turn off this one uh, and let's go ahead and go down here to uh, Claycraft and we'll just hit generate again. And there we go. Now we have our Chihuahua, but he's made out of clay and super cute. Uh, by the way, each of these images on this laptop 3080 with 8 gigs of uh, VRAM takes about 30 seconds to generate. So we're between 30 to 40 seconds to generate for each one. Uh, so just give you some idea how long it's going to take. Uh, let's go ahead and pick origami. And there we go. Now our good little boys here are made out of folded paper. Uh, you notice on this one though, it has a little bit of realistic chihuahua showing through, which is not quite what we wanted in this case. So again, that's where AI's creativity sometimes is a double-edged sword. So uh, what you need to do is just kind of look through here and find whatever you like. And there's so many art styles in here. It's just really amazing. You've got watercolor and surrealistic. You've got uh, Renaissance and there's down here is medieval. Uh, you also have all sorts of sci-fi and cyberpunks. You even have like game styles uh, like, uh, you know, like Zelda style and stuff like that. Uh, all sorts of uh, horror, you know, um, uh, styles. You got horror, you got macabre and Lovecraft and sometimes grunge can be helpful or gothic. Uh, so if you're, you know, into that, uh, that's a good place for that. Those are the manga style back there. And just on and on and on. Down here we have dark fantasy. Uh, up at the top there's another fantasy. Uh, I do wish, by the way, they would sort these in alphabetical order, but they just keep adding more to the bottom. Uh, so that's really kind of cool. Uh, there's even one here now called here sticker design. So in case you want to start your own Etsy store, boom, right there you go. Uh, so, uh, and there's even some uh, double ups on these. Uh, like, uh, let's see here. Where's a... a duplicate there's actually a couple of uh like watercolors there's watercolor 2 there's two pop arts uh stuff like that so there's a, a, a few that actually uh, are like different flavors of kind of the same style and that's because these are all based on these kind of individual uh you know packs of styles and images that people have built and so they include them and sometimes like there's two good ones so they'll include both of them to give you more options of course so anyway this is the very best thing about the the focus or focus program uh, is all of these wonderful styles it makes it so easy to make something that literally looks like it's you know a medieval manuscript or something like that now, finally, there's one more tab over here. Let's talk about that real quick. Uh, these are kind of the refiners and the base model, which in this case is Stable Diffusion XL. That's the new high res version of Stable Diffusion. Uh, and there's also something called a refiner, which helps improve your pictures, basically. Uh, and then down here, we have Loras. Now, Loras are really cool because they actually help customize the look of the uh, whatever you're doing. Now, of course, over here we have all these styles, but let's say we wanted like a specific person or something like that. So let's go ahead and actually see if we can get that done by setting a Laura. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back over here to my web browser and we are going to go to this website called Civit AI, CivitAI.com. And again, links in the description. Uh, and let's go ahead and find a uh, model that we want to use. So I'm going to click on models over here. 
uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and search for one and I'm gonna search for uh, Emma Watson okay and it's gonna hit enter on that and it's gonna pull up all my Emma Watson's over here now some of these models are for older versions of stable diffusion so I'm gonna use this filter right here and I'm gonna pick SD with stable diffusion XL 1.0 that's the version that we are using uh, and right here is the model or the Laura I'm sorry that I'm going to use and this is a Laura for Emma Watson basically it puts her face onto whatever image you want uh, and it's a 200 meg download so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click the download button and we are going to go ahead and download this and we'll be back as soon as that is done Okay, that didn't took just a second. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, open up the uh, folder for that. Now, right here it is, and it says uh, Emma XL, and at the end it says Safe Tensors down here, and that uh, means it's a LoRa model. Uh, what I need to do is I need to copy this into the correct folder uh, in Focus, and so I'm going to right-click this, and we're going to hit the weird new copy button in Windows 11, uh, and we're going to minimize all of this and that and right out here is our focus window right here remember where we hit the run command well we want to go into the focus folder and then we want to go into models and right down here are Laura's okay and we're just gonna put our Laura right here in fact it says put Laura's here okay we will do Right there is our Laura. So now we have our Emma XL uh, Mini right there. Okay, now we can actually use this to generate our images. So let's come back over here. I'm gonna open the program back up again. Notice there's a refresh button down here. I'm gonna click that, otherwise we won't see our, uh, our file. Oh, now we'll drop it down here and let's change that to Emma. Okay, so now down here, I'm gonna say, Emma Watson uh, as link from, uh, let's see, the Legend of Zelda. All right. And hit uh, generate here, and let's see what sort of results we get. Now you notice, by the way, while it's generating, there's a weight over here. And the weight is how much impact this LoRa is gonna have on the image. Most LoRa's work uh, well between, somewhere which usually between 0.5 and 0.8. Uh, you can crank it up really high, but that may not be what you want on that. So generally, play around with like 0.7 and 0.8 and see how that goes. Uh, and of course, if you need it more, then you can crank it up more. If you need it less, just you know turn it back down. Oh, okay, so we've got our first one here. That's pretty good. That kind of looks like Link and also looks like Emma Watson. And there we go. We got two actually excellent images of Emma Watson as Link. And of course, we could extend this down here. We could say Emma Watson as Link from The Legend of Zelda, you know, in New York City in the 1930s. And it's going to probably put that in the background uh, so that, you know, you can just extend these out as much as you want. And if you don't want any cars on the street, well, maybe you go over here to settings down the negative prompt and say like no cars or something like that or cars because you don't want cars. Uh, so that's basically how you use the program. Let me show you one more thing though. Uh, you might be wondering, well, we're generating all these images, you know, and of course I could, you know, right click and, and save them or something like that. But where did all these go? Well, let's go ahead and find them. Uh, we're gonna go back over here to our folder where our focus program is at. Uh, and we'll go all the way back out to the beginning where we hit found the run command. So I'm going to go into focus and then we're going to go into outputs and that's going to have the date. So today's date today. So we're just going to go in here and there are all of our images that we've created. And if we double click on this log file, which is a HTML file, by the way, so it'll open up a web browser. It actually says the exact prompt, if there's any negative prompts, and all of the settings that were used, like if there's any LoRa's or whatever used, they will all be in there. So you can recreate these exact images. Uh, it even has the seed that it used. So you could type that seed number back in and have it generate this exact image over and over and over again. You notice down here on the LoRa, it's using that Emma LoRa, right, that we downloaded. 
right? And there we go. There's all of our images. And so that's it. You now know how to use and run Stable Diffusion to generate really any image that you would like, uh, particularly using the Focus or Focus uh, flavor of Stable Diffusion, which I think is the absolute best for most folks who just wanted to get in there and get a good image and are not interested in all the nitty gritty details of AI image generation. So I certainly hope you liked the video, and if you did, please hit that thumbs up button, or maybe even the subscribe button, and I will talk to you next time.